Seen some pretty bad boiler installations. Hope you guys are ready for this one. <laughs> oh my god. What is going on here? How are we doing everyone? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another day in the life of a gas engineer. So I know it's the bank holiday weekend and I hope everyone's having a great weekend so far. And I know we've got another day off left for tomorrow. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to get a bank holiday special video out. If I, it just depends on how much time I've got because by the time you guys are watching this, I should probably either be back from Peppa Pig World or be on my way back from Peppa Pig World because I will be there Saturday night. Um, we're doing the day at Peppa Pig World with Arian and then coming back Sunday evening. So I'm not sure if I'll be back by the time this goes live, but regardless, you guys are going to get to see what I've been up to the last few days and I hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, I just want to say a big, big thank you to everyone who subscribed to the video or subscribed to the channel off the back of the last video. I gained 45 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. So I'm just really asking you guys again, if you're watching my videos, if you're enjoying what you see, please just hit the little subscribe button below. You have no idea when I see those numbers go up, how happy it makes me because all this time and effort I'm putting into making these videos, it makes it worthwhile. So please, 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 if you do enjoy the content, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell button. Let's get on with the video. Have a good one, everyone. Okay, so we're back at the Worcester from yesterday. Customers decided to go ahead with the repair, so I'm going to start draining this down, get it off the wall. Got myself a new plate, an expansion vessel, uh, a few other bits. Got a PRV, got the flue stat, all the seals, burner seal, electrodes, everything that I'm going to need to rebuild the spoiler. So yeah, let's just start draining it down and get it off the wall. Now normally, because I'm going to be changing the PRV anyway, I would have just drained it out through the PRV, but we don't know where the PRV is going or the condense. So the other job I need to do is I need to bring this higher and punch another two holes out so that it comes out the external wall on that side because I don't know if they're disappearing into the wall somewhere and they've had some leaks downstairs. So I'm gonna, I've had a look on the other side of the wall. We've got enough space to bring the PRV and the condense slightly higher and punch it out the wall. So I'm going to do that as well. So I'm not going to drain it out through the PRV. I'll drain it out the proper way because if there is a, if that is leaking in the wall somewhere, don't want it to cause further damage. Okay, so just letting the last of it drain down. So undone the flue, so that's loose. Open up the vent tube. I did pump out the vessels to make sure any excess water in there is gone. Uh, I always soak everything in WD-40 first, so expansion vessel connections out. The PRV connection down there is loose, and yeah, I'm just waiting for these last few dregs of water to drain out. And then once that's drained out, we can lift it off the wall. Okay, so the vessel's been changed, that's a new one, old ones in the box, and now we start working on this. So whilst I've got it off the wall, I can do the plate, I can do the PRV, get those two done, and then we've got new lip seal for this, we've got new flue seals as well. I noticed that there was, I can see a bit of rusting coming through the flue, and I found that the flue seal at the end was gone. Where have I put it? Let me see us somewhere. Ah, yeah, the actual terminal, that seal is just gone, so you can see where it's been leaking in there. So I've got a couple of flue seals, so I'm going to replace that. Replace the flue seals inside the flue elbow, replace that lip seal, 
got the burner seal and everything there. So get that done first. I'm just going to get the plate and the PRV done. Then might just strip this all out while it's on the floor or might get back on the wall and then do this other bits. Haven't decided yet. But yeah, just going to crack on with those bits now. Right, so that's the plate and the new PRV done. I haven't tightened it fully um, because this flap doesn't up and down all the way. So I'll make sure I get that tightened up once I put it back on the wall. I think I'm just gonna wire this all off here. I'm just gonna do it here. Change the burner seals, the flue stat, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I'm just gonna start stripping the front of it down now. Right, so the electrodes actually look okay, so I don't think we need to change them, but burner seal definitely is changing. The gas tube is split. Right, let me get it off of there. Split completely, so that definitely is changing. And for the sake of it, I'm not gonna take a risk. I'm gonna change that as well. I mean, I literally just pulled on that a little bit and it split the bearing plate, so best to just get it all changed over while we're here. Except, I mean, the electrodes, you can see, they are pretty much spotless. Just need a little clean up and they should be fine. So that's the only thing that doesn't need to change it. Other than that, all these bits, everything's getting changed. Right, that's the condition of the old lip seal, and that's the new one. So you can see there's a prominent lip on this, which on, on this is it, completely squashed down. So that little lip is what makes the seal, kind of looks like a flu seal inside out, but it's not, it just goes around there. Probably easier if I pop it around the back first. Just make sure it don't slip. It's got a bit twisted there. There we go. That's sitting in there nicely. Now the flu stat, once I've got this up and got a bit of play here, I can probably just pop that flu stat out, he says. Maybe not. Maybe I do need the grips. Mm, nope, that just breaks the pins. Yeah, I think this is what happened to me last time. I, I pushed it in and I thought I lost it. But luckily, got that out. Right, that's all been rebuilt. I'm not gonna lie, that was actually harder doing it on here than it was in there. I think when it's on the wall, I've got a little bit more leverage to swing that back in, but for some reason, I was really struggling to get the banana arm back in. It's in now, so 
Now I'm gonna get the boiler back on the wall. I don't think it's raining yet. I need to push the flue in from the outside. I managed to break the seal a little bit and push it out. So yeah, let's just get back on the wall first and then I'll sort the flue out. Feels like it's on. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, I'll take that. Right, we are back on, pressurized, just uh, putting in service mode at the moment, low flame, just to let it get rid of some excess air. I did purge it all through from the vent at the top and everything. Analyzer's purging, so just gonna let this get rid of any excess air, then do our safety check. So we've changed the burner seal, bearing plate, gas tube, flue stat, lip seal there, or flue manifold seal, whatever, the top seal there, Flue seals up there, plate heat exchanger, PRV, pretty much a brand new boiler now, other than the main heat exchanger, pump and fan. So yeah, just gonna run it for its safety checks, make sure we are all good. And then I can make my way home. Right, boiler's done. It's all working, oh, I hope you guys can hear me. It's all working well. Uh, readings are spot on. Didn't need to do any adjustment on the gas valve, which is great. If you're wondering why the condense is in a bucket, it's because the plan was to try and bring the condense higher. I mean, the joints were even glued there, so it's just popped off. But where the roof line starts, it's probably about here. So obviously I can't do that. So I'm gonna come back one day next week and put a condense pump here so that we can put the condense and the PRV into the pump and then reroute that to somewhere externally. Or if you can tap into any one of these wastes, we'll try and do that. So that's why it's in a bucket at the moment. But other than that, all is done. We're out of here. Seen some pretty bad boiler installations. Hope you guys are ready for this one. <laughs> oh my God. What is going on here? Someone actually did this and got paid for it. Makes me wonder why I spend so much time making an install look half decent when I could be getting paid for doing something like this in probably an hour, if that. That's unbelievable. It's got error code, I wonder why, let's find out. Okay, so I've just fired it up. So it looks like there's no radiators here, they've looped the flow and returns, so they're only using it for hot water. Running a hot tap at the moment. When it fired up, it made a bit of a, a whistling sound. But I just wanna see what it does, let it run for a few minutes and see if it throws up the error code again. So E01 on an ECA boiler is basically ignition lockout. So it's like your F28s on valence, your EA227s on Worcester, E133 on a Baxi, same sort of stuff. I'm gonna just let it run and uh, do a few tests, see what happens. Well, I had the case off the boiler, everything's fine in there. If I pull that condensed trap back a bit, you're gonna see water squirting out of there. Just slowly. There, can you see it's starting to come out? The reason why, now here, if you look closely here, if I shake that, you can actually see the water 
It's just sitting there. The reason why that is, let's follow this condensed pipe. Comes around there, around there, down. Oh, hang on, it's going uphill. Up, down, up, down. It's like a roller coaster ride. And then going into there. We'll try and pop that hose off there and we'll see what comes out of there. Oh, shit. Jeez. got some issues with the condensate that's for sure oh. right so I've just cleaned out the condensate trap just for good measure uh, that's all okay there wasn't any blockages or anything like that in there but yeah we'll pop this back together the problem is it's an installation error so it means well the whole installation I, can't, I don't want to swear but you can see how bad it is Oh. So yeah, they've got to, I'm going to give them a recommendation to what they need to do to bring it up to a proper installation because right now the warranty is void. It's not going to be covered by the manufacturer. So once they bring it up to the correct specifications, then the manufacturer can look to reinstate the warranty. I think it, well, it's all coming up from plastic anyway. So I'm going to recommend need, I believe you need at least a meter of copper before you can go into plastic. And regardless, if they're not using it for heating, they should just got water heater rather than a combi boiler. So put a small radiator here, just as a bypass. Because right now they've just shut off the flying return valves, but put a radi small radiator here just to use as a bypass and then sort out the pipework for the hot and colds. At least get some of it in copper before they run it all in plastic. Yeah, got from there really. But that's all done. I'm gonna pop this back together. I'm gonna test the flue as well, make sure the readings are all fine on there. If that's all good, then we're all right. So I get asked if by, oh, a few of you asked you on my videos, what are these ETA boilers like? This is just to give you an idea of how they look on the inside. So as I said, brass internals, you've got your plate heat exchanger at the back, you've got your Honeywell gas valve there, ground force pump, EDM force fan, you've got your stainless steel heat exchanger, wing core expansion vessel. So you've got all the major components that you'd get in any sort of other non-brand boiler. And also, I'm just going to show you quickly how easy it is to actually strip out because I'm going to have a look at the burner inside here to see what sort of damage has been caused by the condens backing up. It's literally, you undo the gas connection above the gas valve. All right, so that's loose. Obviously, undo the electrical connections. I've already taken off the electrode connections. Um, You've got your fan silencer tube, which I literally just get a long reach screwdriver. Let's drop down the back, but that's fine. I can grab it afterwards, so that will help you pull the, allow you to pull the snorkel off. And then you've just got four 10 mil bolts, same as the valent. Glad I took that off. What's getting caught there? Jeez, that's that's bad. What's getting caught? What's getting caught? Ah, I think it's just a condens. There we go. So that's how easy it is to get it off. But have a look at the state of that. Definitely had a condens issue there. That is terrible. Burners all blocked up inside of that 
That's going to need a new reinstallation pad and everything now. Well, this is what happens when you get your boiler installed by a cowboy. So I've just got the hoover out and given it a bit of a clean. So we'll pop it back together and we'll do a test on it and see what we get out of that. So we all knew that was coming because it's not being installed to MIs. But not only that, when I was doing my flue gas analysis, it was getting, it was just under 350 ppm. But yeah, that's not on. So obviously there's still crap in the main heat exchanger, which is causing the, it's causing slight incomplete combustion. So it needs a proper clean out. I cleaned it as best as I could, but I'm not going to do any more work on it until the whole installation has been rectified. And then if they want a full service done properly, then I can come back and do that. But for the time being, this cowboy job needs to be done properly. Morning everyone, it's Friday today and we have another boiler off the wall job. So today's job is taking off a valent eco fit pure heat only. Luckily it's a seal system so I haven't got to worry too much about an open vent and stuff out and literally just going to drain off and check this out. Oh my god, what a glorious sight that is, an outside drain off. So hopefully that's a sign of good things to come. Let's get inside and start, well, we can drain out from here, but get inside and get set up. Right, so this is the one. You guys might remember this from a couple of videos ago where I was doing, basically it was a day of servicing. This was one of the EcoFit Pures that I serviced, did a full service on it, and the rear flue seal was missing. Uh, it was leaking, so Valiant had been out of here, and they said that basically because that expansion vessel's in the way, they won't do it because they can't get the boiler off the wall. I mean... To be honest, it's just the bracket's a bit loose. I can probably move that out of the way. I might even just take it off from the nuts here and do it like that. So, yeah, I get it from their point of view, but I don't know. I guess it's just an, another reason to not want to take the boiler off the wall. But we're here. We're going to start draining down and get it sorted. They've left the bits here, luckily. So they've got the whole rear flue duct and gasket. So they've left the bits here for us just in case of draining it down, see what I can do with this vessel because the boiler's got to come away. So it might be a bit tricky to do it with the vessel in place. So I might end up just taking it off anyway. We'll see. Right, the outside drain off works. So that's all draining down now. So we've got the, I've just bled all the upstairs radiators or vented all the upstairs radiators. Normally, if I'm doing something small, I won't bother draining down the whole system, but because I'm doing the boiler and pretty much booked out half day, I haven't got anything else booked in today. I'm just draining it down. I don't want any water coming from the top because obviously it's a heat only. There's no isolation points on it. So best to just drain the upper level, leave the lower level, lower level filled in. It's a sealed system anyway, and then get it done. Right, got the vessel off. It doesn't even look like it was screwed on properly. So we've got the screws there and there, but literally as soon as I undid it, it just fell off. So vessels off we've just popped it on the side there uh systems drained down put a cap on there because we had a little drip coming from there got an aav up here so i'm probably just gonna i mean the aav i think is open anyway but i'll crack the nut there to get rid of any excess there then we can start cracking the compressions on there i've got a couple of compression stoppings so i'll put them on there to stop any water from coming out and then we've got uh they screwed oh, i don't think they've done that rear screw there uh, bend these forward and then pull the boiler off. Okay, so a bit of a progress update. Undone the two connections there, but I had to cut the, I can't remember which one that is now, the flow or the return. Um, had to cut that on the side because that, as it comes down from there, there's a T which goes straight down and it goes into the bypass. I tried to undo that and see if I had any movement going up, but where it's going straight down there, I was sort of governed by that. But now that that's cut that, I've got loads of movement there, so that's fine. System's obviously drained down. I'll just put a compression coupling on there. So if there's ever any future work that needs doing on this, it can just we can just undo the compression and lift it off again. Condens has been disconnected, electrics are disconnected, gas is off, and just gotta bend these two back forward, and then we should be ready to get the boiler off the wall. So yeah, hopefully it's going okay so far. So let's hope it carries on.
I mean, it is Friday after all. We want to try and get home at a decent time today. Right, let's get this off the wall. Let's see if I can hang that over here. So you can see where that's all been leaking. So we're going to change that seal over. Also, not only did they not screw in the top bit there, have a look at that picture. So you've got A circled, it says one of those three should be screwed. Neither one of those three are screwed. So yeah, fair enough, we've got the fixings on either side, but I'm going to have to put some fixings, well, at least one into one of those. Oh man, I'm glad I didn't book any other work in today. Check that out. So, gonna need a whole new flu. So I'm gonna have a look, see what merchants are around here. I think there's probably a wall with your city plumbing around here. Gonna go pick up another rear flu, and then yeah, just basically just do the whole thing from scratch, pretty much. It's gonna be like a fresh install. Quick stop at City Plumbing. They've got the Valent rear flu in stock, so we are good to go. Luckily, it was about seven minutes down the road. Got the flu, back to the job now, knock that old one out, pop the new one in. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Let's get this boiler done. It's still Friday, we still want an early finish. Let's go. Okay, old flu is out. New flu's in, so easiest thing with these, because they're telescopic, I haven't got to worry about measuring. I literally screwed the flu into the rear bracket, put the bracket back on, put that other fixing on as well. And now from the outside, we can extend it out however far we need to, but I want to get the boiler on from the inside first because the flue bit I can do from the outside afterwards and it is absolutely hammering it down outside at the moment. So don't want to be out there. Let's get the boiler back on first. All right, so that was the state of the old seal. It was just completely mash up. There we go, look, all that. So, yep, that's off. New seal's on. Let's get this boiler back on. So I'm back on, that actually goes on a lot easier than I thought it would. It literally just slips onto the flue. I think I use plenty of grease in there, so that's good. Those two tabs are on. I'm gonna make sure I put my little soft tapper screw in there, bend these back up, pop these back in, compression coupling on there, and then start doing my 26.9 checks. And if we're all good, then I'll see the flue from the outside at the end. So yeah, hopefully, what's the time? Half 12, it's going good so far. Right, we are all done, back together. Boiler's pressurized, it's on, gas is on, it's all been tested. Just purged it, I had quite a bit of air in there, so luckily I was able to open the bleed screw from here, put a plumb tub underneath it, just let it purge out. I'm just waiting for it to go into P1, and then we can do our flue gas analysis. Obviously, first thing I'm gonna do is check that rear flue seal, make sure the new one's fine. If that's all okay, then carry on with the rest of the flue gas analysis, gas rate 26.9 checks, and then, yeah, 
We're done. Out of here. I, well, just got to seal the flu from the outside. But other than that, we are done today. So hope you guys have enjoyed this one. And if you've never done a rear flu before, it's well, you've seen how easy it is. Literally pop the rear flu into the bracket, screw it in, push it through and then screw it onto the wall. Simple as that. So, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. But yeah, hope you guys find this useful. Catch you guys on the next one.